Hello, I'm Sam Copeland, and I'm a national master on the content team here at chess.com. I'm here today to show you an incredible game between Stockfish New and Leela Chess Zero. In two prior videos on this channel, we looked at fantastic victories from Stockfish New, who was leading a 600 game tournament between traditional Stockfish, Stockfish New, and Leela Chess Zero. Since then, that tournament has concluded and Leela Chess Zero came from behind to win the event in a narrow victory. The engines seem to be very, very closely matched, although each engine has its own specific strengths and weaknesses. Today, we're looking at one of Leela Chess Zero's best victories in the event, a victory that showcases its strengths and its ability to look very, very deeply into the future of a position. This game begins with a Sicilian defense, but unfortunately for those of us who love bloodthirsty struggles, we won't get an open Sicilian in this case. Instead, we have two knight c3, the closed Sicilian, which the engines have been programmed to begin with. Now, the closed Sicilian is going to lead to a more slow and maneuvering type of struggle. This seems to favor Leela Chess Zero, who is better at deep understanding and weaker at brute force calculation. Stockfish New is not going to have a lot of opportunities for brute force calculation in this game. Now Leela Chess Zero has brought this bishop out to g5, a classic idea, going for the exchange of dark squared bishops because black's bishop on g5 is a classical bad bishop restricted by the central pawns and the bishop on c1 is a classical good bishop. So Stockfish New is going to take the chance to tickle this bishop with pawn to h4, pushing it back to h6, and now it will induce g6 with queen h5 g6 and the queen falls back to d1 and after knight f6 knight on to f1 the knight is making a nice journey to head into the d5 square a key strong point for white in these types of positions now this has allowed the exchange of dark squared bishops so we get bishop takes c1 queen takes c1 and in this position bishop e6 now queen h6 this is a very interesting move when you see the way that this game develops the queen h6 infiltration is trying to take advantage of the weakness of the dark squares and the lack of a dark squared bishop. It's obviously preventing kingside castling, and it's hoping to tie down the rook and the knight to the defense of the g7 and h7 squares. On the other hand, the queen can end up off sides on h6. Now, at this point in the game, that's not too much of a problem because it seems like the queen can always retreat at some point. But as the game develops, retreat may be more and more difficult. So after queen h6, we see knight to h5, pawn to a4, queen d7, knight to e3, heading to that d5 square. Castles, knight into d5, king b8, and pawn c3. Now, I think a classical perspective on this position would say that white should be a lot better because white has good control over this d5 outpost and has kept black out of the d4 outpost in return. However, deeper understanding suggests that actually the d5 outpost is difficult for white to make use of. It's very hard sometimes to know whether an outpost is actually going to bring tangible benefits in a position. And in this case, it doesn't seem clear that white is able to get those tangible benefits. So the rook slides over to f8, and here we have our first opportunity to capture on h7. Now, basically throughout this game, it's never going to be good to capture on h7. In this case, the refutation is obvious. After queen takes, then rook h8 immediately traps the queen. So instead, white decides to castle queenside here, and we get pawn to a6. And now the interesting move, g4. This looks like it might even be winning for white. Now, if you capture here on g4 with the bishop, the problem is knight into b6. The queen is tickled, and she wants to continue defending this bishop, but she cannot. If she tries to attack this knight here, uh, saying, okay, if you capture over here, then I'll just take your knight on b6, and it's fine, then the knight into d5 traps the queen. The two knights coordinate perfectly. So we cannot capture the pawn here on g4, but we can play the clever move knight to f4, which of course had to be anticipated by Leela. In general, engines are really, really good at anticipating things, especially when those things are only a few moves ahead. So in this position, white can capture on f4, but white will not get an advantage from doing so. If knight takes f4, pawn takes f4, queen takes f4, winning a pawn, knight to e5 is a strong move. Black is hitting g4, black is hitting a4, and black is also hitting c4. 
There's no way in this position for white to retain an advantage. If you trade here on e6, then recapturing just opens up more attacks. And again, black is going to be able to easily gain the pawn back and have much, much better pieces. In fact, black should probably be winning in this position. So after the knight goes into f4, white decides to sink a knight into f6 in return. I think this is already a little bit of a mistake from Stockfish New, and maybe black is better at this point. Leaving the knight here on f4 means that it's very difficult for the queen to get out of h6. We already anticipated this problem a little bit, and it's becoming very, very clear here. Also, the knight looks like it's pressuring h7, but again, you're never going to be able to take on h7 whether it's the knight or the queen doing the capturing. For example, after queen e7, if the knight captures here, then rook h8 pins the knight and you're not going to be able to get out of that pin. There's lots of ideas, including f6, to try and go pick up that knight, and the knight will eventually be picked off by black, who can really take a lot of time to do it if desired. So after queen e7, we see the move pawn to g5, securing both the queen and the knight in their outposts. But again, these outposts are not where these pieces should be, and they don't have good roots back from here. So now queen c7, uh, and in this position, again, we should consider the capture on h7, but here you have rook h8, queen g7, and the nice inclusion of bishop takes c4 allows this knight to fall back to e6, trapping the queen. So in this position, probably best is pawn to h5, trying to open the h file to get the queen out of there. But even after you open the h-file, you're going to need some time to reintroduce the queen to the struggle. That can allow Leela to play aggressively with a trade on c4 here, and then the move pawn to b5. It seems like black is a lot better here, and there's good chances to crash through on the queen side before this queen ever gets out. But at least she would be able to get out at some point in this game. Instead, king d2. I don't really understand this move here from Stockfish New. It doesn't seem to contribute to White's goals in this position, and I think that it has to be a mistake. Now Leela continues with queen b6, pawn to b3, queen a5, which has an idea of knight to d4, rook to a1, king to a7 here, bishop d5, rook to b8, Rook A to B1 in this position, both engines are really kind of maneuvering a little bit uniquely here, and there are a lot of alternatives for both engines uh, in these moves. The queen falls back to C7, bishop C4, queen back to D8, rook to G1 in this position, knight C6, and now bishop to D5. This is a great moment to pause your video and try to find an aggressive idea for Leela to perfectly place the black knights. As is often the case, Leela Chess Zero perfectly combines tactics and strategy with the tactics supporting the strategy. Knight to d4, a beautiful and brilliant knight hop. Now, you cannot capture this knight because after pawn takes, you have queen a5 check, the king moves over, and then pawn takes d4. Black has many threats, overwhelming threats. You're threatening to take this knight. You've got the idea of queen c3 check. You've also got an open c file where you can bring a rook either before or after capturing on d5. Together the threats are too much and white is just busted in this position. So after knight d4, can you ignore the knight? Well, yes, but you've got threats to defend against. b3 is hit and after a trade on d5 you could pick this off and you've got an immediate fork threat. The only way to defend both of these is rook to b1. Now black is able to trade on d5, and after knight f takes d5, you have knight h5, queen h6, and knight e6. So the knight d4 move actually led to a positional gain, a repositioning of the knights so they have perfect control over f4. Now in this position, my weak stockfish only evaluates the position as very, very slightly better for black. But actually, I think this position is totally decisive. The basic problem is in the queen. How does the queen ever get off of the h6 square? There is no way to do it. This is something that Leela Chess Zero excels at. It can see deeply into the nature of positions and see which pieces are bad, not just for a moment, but for eternity. It does the same thing with other types of advantages that have long-term characteristics, including spatial advantages. 
in many cases, you'll see Stockfish evaluate a position as totally equal or only slightly worse, and Leela Chesiro is already saying you can't resolve the problems in this position. I think that this is a decisive advantage, and eventually, Black will break through. Leela Chesiro is patient about that breakthrough. We see f3 here, the knight hops into f4, king c2, rook g8, b4 here, white is actually trying to create an advantage and initiative on the queen side. c takes, rook takes, queen c8, rook c4, queen d7, a5, rook to h8, knight b6, queen e6, rook h2, rook b to d8, knight to d5, we get a trade of knights here, rook c8, rook a4, queen e8, rook a3, rook c5, and c4. So we've seen a lot of maneuvering here, but the basic problem of the queen on h6 never having a route back into the action has not been resolved. And in fact, in this position, black has a forced win, though you won't see it with a weak version of stockfish. The winning move is queen to d8 here. Now queen to d8 is threatening the pawn on a5, so knight to b6. I encourage you to pause your video and try to find the brilliant breakthrough that Leela Chess Zero has here. This next move is all tactics. The brilliant breakthrough, pawn to d5. This move appears impossible as the d5 square appears firmly in white's control, but that control is illusory. Here, you cannot capture with the c pawn because it is pinned. If the knight captures, then a5 falls, and that allows black key infiltration squares on the queen side. The remaining move is e takes d5, and this is played in the game. The refutation is the very sneaky queen d6. This move hits both undefended white rooks. Neither are attacked directly, but both are attacked indirectly. Whichever rook you save, there is a discovery to hit the other rook and to break through. In the game, it is the h2 rook that is saved, rook h1, and this allows rook takes d5, knight takes, and then queen takes a3. This position is winning for black. Some of the advantages that black has include the exposed position of the white king. Usually this is decisive if a queen is nearby to take advantage. The a5 pawn is also lost, and most importantly, that queen on h6, the queen that went to h6 on move 12, is still entombed. Now, black's rook and knight do have to stay where they are for the time being to keep the queen trapped, but at some point they could hop into the action to give a fatal blow, while the white queen can never leave h6. In fact, the rook and knight are able to stay there because the black queen seems to be able to win the game on her own. She picks off a5 and takes aim at the other weaknesses in white's camp, and eventually it's time to start pushing the pawns on the queen side. So here we have some checks. The b5 move uh, advances on the queen side, and pretty soon we're going to have two pass pawns over here. c5, a5, and we continue to push. Again, the queen on h6 can do nothing, and she's going to stay on h6 until eventually Stockfish New realizes that she's useless and gives her up for the knight. Of course, this is basically engine resignation, but in this case, the engines play it out till checkmate. The pawns keep pushing forward on the queen side, and black will soon get another queen. It looks like it's going to be a ladder mate, but white narrowly evades a ladder mate by blocking with the knight and allowing the king to run up the board. Of course, this is a very small resource, and now we have mate here with queen to d3 and checkmate. This is a beautiful victory by Leela Chess Zero. Leela won many excellent games in this tournament. The thing that she kept doing was outplaying her opponents in positions where she had small positional edges. Positions with opposite colored bishops or strong knights or just one weak pawn. This was one of her finest victories showcasing how the white queen, which seemed to be unappreciated by Stockfish New, could be so out of place on h6. If you want to check out some more vi uh, victories from this tournament, some of the brilliant victories from Stockfish New, then simply click on the videos that are appearing in the pop-up right now.